morning and welcome back to Starlighter European coverage. We're here with day 14 for season 10 and we've got an interesting day. Only three matches, but it's a mini round robin going on. We've got NYM, Cleave, and Power Rangers all squaring off against one another. Up first will be NYM versus Cleave. After that, it will be Power Rangers versus Cleave. Then Power Rangers versus NYM to round things off. I'm Zayori in the studio, joined remotely by David Parker. Gods, what's the good word this morning, my friend? I'm feeling pretty good. It's it's not really morning here, but uh, I've been casting some good old Dota 2 most of today with the Game Show League LAN going on, but Starlet of Europe action. I, it's kind of nice and interesting today because we get to see three of the teams, like you say, the mini round robins. So while well, they're not favorites to go to the LAN finals, it's teams that every now and then do kind of cause some upsets. We saw MYM take a game off Alliance. Time. We've seen Cleve and Power Rangers put up some pretty good performances. So... Between these teams, it's going to be a good showing of just like which of them is kind of the more consistent. Yes, absolutely. And uh, like you said, MYM, they upset Alliance the other day. And Power Rangers have been looking a little bit more shaky this season than perhaps they have in past seasons. Uh, but we'll see if they can kind of redeem themselves in our second two games coming up here after this. So MYM versus Cleave. We see some pretty standard stuff coming out onto the field. Skywrath Mage, Faceless Void for MYM. And Tinker with a Vengeful Spirit opener from Cleave, of course, there to try and deal with that Chronosphere a little bit more. I've seen a lot of Tinkers lately, and I've seen a lot of Tinkers lose, i got to say. like This is... not to say it's a bad hero, it's just someone being over-prioritized, and teams that, teams mostly are equipped with dealing it. The problem with the games where we get Tinker is the way of dealing with it is just not letting him snowball, not letting him get, get a bunch of kills, because even when he gets his Dagon blink up, like if you kind of group up a lot, if you avoid him, he doesn't get kills. Problem is... You end up with these 40, 50, 60 minute kind of stalemate games like we saw, um, I think, one of yesterday. But hey, we'll see if that's going to be the case here. I don't want to, I don't want to disappoint people. I don't want to uh, get, get people's expectations too low. Sometimes Ten you get some exciting remaining. games. And MYM, a lot of killing potential with Skyrath, Void, Clockwork, a great Five Tinker counter. So uh, definitely a lot of aggression coming out of MYM. Even someone like a Faceless Void, if you're Reserve using that Chronosphere every time it comes up, you're looking at a lot of early kills. Yeah, definitely. Dying now, MYM will pick up Clockwork here as presumably their offlaner. Not a bad initiator, but not a hero that synergizes particularly well with the Faceless Void. Sure, he's got Rocket flaring a little bit here and there, but um, not yeah. not the the best synergy between those heroes once the Chronosphere comes out. I think they just really wanted it as a Tinker counter, I guess. Um, it's, it's pretty good at hunting the Tinker. Rocket Flare to scout him in trees. Hookshot, obviously, to lock him down. And remaining. you yeah. even sometimes see Tinkers adjusting their build, throwing in like a four staff um, against Clockworks. Radiant so, team. We'll yeah, okay. yeah, I guess that's a good point. MYM will now grab something that synergizes very well Dyer with the Faceless team Void. Back. Their second support will be a Sand King. Probably uh, safe to assume he'll take a little jungle farming priority here, get that Blink Dagger up nice and quick. And yeah. I'm sure we'll see epicenters coming out all over that Chronosphere. But now Cleave with a very interesting pick, Radiant the Undying. Ban. Yeah. This is kind of scary, like, hard to defend pushes. Like, you put down the Tombstone, you liquid fire the tower, and if you lay down Marks and Machines, like, defending into that, defending that's really tricky. Uh, if you get a big four-man, five-man Chronosphere off, that obviously remaining. works. But Cleave aren't going to group up for that. They'll have Tinker off in the trees somewhere. They'll have Jakiro and Undying maybe remaining. in the front lanes hitting the tower with the Tombstone down. But then the other heroes kind of just avoid it. And that's why MYM banned the Pugna. They don't want some kind of five-man cheesy push coming their way. And Tinker, not really known as a pushing hero, but defending, trying to defend towers when Marks and Machines is just being spammed at you and meets missiles are just getting all your heroes down nice and low is really tricky. Yeah, now, one of the issues with Undying is what you do with him in the Dying laning phase. Usually he's thrown into a tri-lane, and part of the problem is he's almost too good at it. He's one of those heroes, kind of like Ogre Magi, who's unbelievably strong at level 1, level 2, and even all the way up to level 6 in those initial points in, in Flesh Golem. And more often than not, when I see an Undying, the opposition will just dodge him. They'll rotate their lanes, they'll make sure their tri-lane isn't up against the Undying, and... He can become kind of useless if you just refuse to fight against him and let him spam out Ten all those abilities remaining. and suck your strength away. Yeah, and I think it's almost maybe if MYM Five look at this and be like, okay, remaining. Venge, Jakira, Undying, they're planning to try lane against us and shut down the Void Farm maybe. And I mean, I don't know if that's what Cleaver planning, but it's definitely a possibility. And that's where MYM may be trying to be a bit unpredictable. You can send Void mid against Tinker. It's actually not a terrible matchup for Void. Uh, he should be able to farm probably about just as well as Tinker does, maybe like a fraction less CS than Tinker, but Dark. Void does fine mid against a Tinker if you want to lane it like that. But Radiant the Darkseer pick is 
interesting because mm. eh? they haven't really got a clear solar mid. Darkseer and Clockwork both traditional offlaners. Uh, Void also an offlaner as well as a safe lane farmer. And this makes me think they're at least somewhat planning against uh, some aggressive cleave lanes because Darkseer can just put the Iron Shell down and then stay the hell away from the, like you say, avoid the Undying. Don't fight him. Just put Iron Shell down and back off. Yeah, and really the Darkseer, Clockwork, and Void could Ten all go mid here. Remaining. Any of them could do okay against the Tinker, and we've seen all those heroes go mid, albeit Five somewhat rare. It remaining. is an option. So MYM will also go under the guise of try to guess our lanes, guys, because yeah. this is going to be something time. funky no matter how we work it. And that will kind of uh, give Cleave some time to decide what they want to do in terms of an offlaner here for themselves. Yeah. Um, we'll have a better idea when we see who's picking up what on the MYM side. Arise normally in the mid lane. Uh, quick's normally in the carry and ace in the off lane, but hey, that's something that a lot of teams will oft often mix up as well just to confuse opponents. So Cleave, yeah, they need... Oh, what, do they, what do they kind of want here? I, I think they need a bit more actual damage output, something kind of like like a clinks almost, but uh, he can kind of add an, add an extra percent of single target damage as well, so some okay pushing power. Um, yeah, that would be otherwise, an interesting yeah. choice. Um, Otherwise, you look more towards the team fight because that's where my end. Like they've got Darkseer, you got the vacuum into Epicenter with Chronosphere. I'm sure the, the Chronosphere doesn't really help the Clockwork out too much, but there's so much synergy elsewhere with the team fight. And maybe Cleve look for something to compete with that team fight. Yeah, I mean Tide Hunter would have been a great choice, but of course he's banned out here. Um, I feel like there are other offlaners that I'm just forgetting about, and it's too early in the morning to remember. Ten seconds yeah, I mean, it could be like offensive trialing with the Undying as your offlaner. I was, I was just about to say Viper. Viper is good. It's a good fast mech buyer, and it just it kind of disrupts the enemy team fight because of how tanky Viper is. If he's just sitting in the front lines, you don't you can't really easily just go on the Viper. So it's yeah, I think this kind of it complements the Cleave lineup pretty well. Yeah, um, so they will aggro try, it looks like, with stress on the Viper. He tends to go mid, but yeah, maybe right. it could be a safe lane tinker. I mean, that's, that's he was, not that crazy. He was the solar mid disruptor, I think we saw yesterday. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, so maybe it'll be nice. a safe lane tinker, but still a little bit hard to guess. Hmm. Arise picks up clockwork, which suggests potentially a solar mid clockwork. I don't think I mean, Clock remaining. probably fares just as well as someone like Void does mid against Tinker. Until, and when Clock gets level Five 6, obviously you can kill remaining. the Tinker, but uh, until level 6, Clockwork doesn't do... I think Void even does better than Clockwork mid, just because Void's base damage is so ridiculously good, and he has... Uh, the, the, I mean, he just has great passives as well as the time walk, Prepare but... For battle. Uh, Clockwork obviously... Uh, with fast level 6 on Clockwork, and he just can, can potentially control the game. Yeah, and Void is a little less susceptible to ganks with the time walk. Uh, Clockwork is pretty susceptible early on to rotation. Sure, he has the cogs, but... Um, well, actually, these supports... Yeah, they, there's some pretty scary kill potential there with the Ventral Spirit and the Jakiro. We haven't really mentioned it, but it may be a core Jakiro for Cleave as well. They have three support heroes. So maybe Metpum here will find a little bit of that uh, farm priority in the early laning stage. But we'll have to be patient to see how Cleave settle down with these lanes as they will do a jungle invade. All five of them grouped up. They'll move into the high ground and see what the Dyer are up to in their jungle. And they won't find a hell of a lot. It looks like Ace will be on the Dark Seer headed to uh, the safe lane. Yes. They'll put down He's one sentry. He's expecting offensive try lane. Yeah. Yeah. 30 seconds to battle. They'll put down one sentry to block the hard camp here. And they'll even block the medium camp as well. So preventing this, jung or this Sand King from retreating to the jungle and finding that fast blink dagger. At least that's their plan. Yeah. It, it seems like MYM... Well, they they have a pr pretty good idea that they're being offensive trialing, which is why they send the darks here top. And he, that's where the, the ward is the kind of the giveaway there. The fact he puts an observer ward underneath his T1 tower is to protect him. So they're trying to dodge the trialing, put the put the void in a trialing bottom where they feel he's going to farm a lot safer. And Cleave aren't running an offensive trialing. It is just going to be dual lanes out of Cleave here. But even the dual lanes, like Undying plus Jakiro, is a really strong dual lane. And that's, I mean, that in itself is worth dodging for the void. So. I think MYM's laning is uh, pretty solid here. Yeah, definitely. And it will be good for Cleave to get some farm priority on the Jakiro. Uh, probably the mech will come out on the Viper, as you were mentioning, but um, if Jakiro farms could look for something towards a quick pipe, or even just grabbing a, a decently timed force staff or utility item like that uh, is good news for the twin-headed dragon here. Although maybe it's the Undying that will actually be taking the farm. Both of them 
All right, just starting on GG branches as the stout shield up on the undying, so time will tell. Sanking. Ooh, ooh, yeah, he's invisible. And Mr. Jack Daniels here could be in some trouble. No, they'll go for Roger instead. Burrow Strike to start it off. There's your slow. And easy first blood for MYM. That's part of the problem, not having that rune vision down bottom. They had no clue it was an invisibility. And yeah. MYM, they capitalized. They also seem to have no clue as an offensive trial lane, which I feel like you see the void bottom and you see Dark Sea top. They should have known it's an offensive trial lane. And with with the creep block favoring That's MYM, enough. like it was pushed up really close to the T1 tower on the dire side. And again, he's just completely out of position. Bottom lane, Ventral Spirit this time is going to be the one quick. Really? He went back yeah, for a there creep. We go. <laughs> anyway, I thought they were going to let him get away for a second, but the time walk to slow him down and. Two very easy back-to-back -back kills. Void was the one to draw the first blood and find the bonus goal, but now this assist will really bump up his net worth. Number one by a decent margin just a few minute and a half into this game, and I reckon Quick's maybe looking for a fast Midas here with this start. Um, yeah, I, my, I, I'm personally not a big fan of the Midas, although not, I, I don't think it's bad, but I, it's more like a personal thing where I, I think getting the tread, fast treads, Mask of Madness, you just have so much killing power. Uh, whereas the mask of the, the Midas is so you're a bit vulnerable to getting ganked by certain heroes. But this game, there's not many really strong gankers. It's against heroes like Doom, where I feel like going Midas and Void is really bad against heroes like Doom because it just slows down your later items early on. But this kind of a game against these heroes, Midas, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, with getting these early kills bottom lane, like this opens things up. Sanking can help out mid lane. They've already won the bottom lane, so Sanking can go. Uh, gank mid, gank top, do what he really wants, but if you can keep getting kills bottom, it feels like you may as well. Yeah, Ryze will grab the uh, two minute rune here, is a double damage, and it's a pretty even trade in the mid lane. 10 and 3 on the Viper, 10 and 2 on the Clockwork. So, trading rather evenly so far, and I think that's good news for MYM as Clockwork, oh, yeah. well on his way to a timely level 6. And they will just uh, blonde and Ryze, they ping out the Ancients here. Sand King is not quite level 2 yet. But um, these centers will expire pretty soon here. So this is kind of, um, I don't want to say wasted effort from Cleave. I think the idea is right. But Blonde's yeah. going to find plenty of momentum elsewhere before he'll be looking to really retreat and stack up in the jungle. Yeah, they just they just misread these lanes. They, they were thinking it'd be a defensive trialing with like Sanking jungling and Skyrath zoning out in lane. Here mid, they'll smoke up and they'll dive this tower. They want stress. They open up with the Skywrath Mage. The double damage on Clockwork might make this a much easier kill. Blonde almost falls and, in fact, does go down to the Poison of Viper. Still, they secure the kill. Hakan TP's in, looking for a counter kill onto a rise and might actually have the damage to do it. He does have boots and will continue to pursue. Creep's kind of getting in his way here. But Decayne's soul, or pardon, oh, it will hit him, but just not enough. Sip in the bottle. will keep the Clockwork alive. And it will be a one for one, but quite... Viper did get that kill before he went down, so well, not too bad for the Viper, actually, given the state of that uh, that unfortunate yeah. situation. Yeah, the the Sanking tanked a bit too many, few too many tower hits. I think he tried to uh, get the aggro off him. Well, oh, bottom lane, Quicks in trouble. Quicks not quite quick enough. Laser to the face will bring him down after the magic missile secures him from jumping over the tree line. A noble effort from the Void, but uh, that first point in time walk just doesn't give you a huge amount of range and. Benja was still there with the stun. Blon, looking for the top rune, will find it and pulls Stress out of lane. Takes a little bit of harassment, but now Stress will be forced back as he knows there's a Sand King nipping at his heels. Yep. So, for, for Void, it's kind of tricky. Going, Continuing to go back bottom lane. Uh, he's died once here. You know, the, the supports, like, once you get those few other kills, they kind of want to rotate other lanes, which means Void is somewhat vulnerable bottom lane. and. Skyrath is kind of forced to stay around with him, which is what Rice is going to do for now. Sand King alone can uh, offer a lot of pressure, especially with Clockwork just about to hit level 6. Sand King and Clockwork can definitely find kills on their own without the Skyrath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roger will be forced to use a salve here, and the invisible Sand King will just waddle his way down towards the bottom. Rune is about to expire, but uh, he will pass the wards, and Roger, well aware of it, they saw him pick up the rune, and he'll just move into the tree line and play it passive, uh, passive for now. Good positioning from him, and as I say that, he shows himself as Sand King reveals as well. March the Machine comes out to try and delay this tower push. Meanwhile in the jungle, Jakiro is rotating down. No boots on Jakiro. Needs to be a little bit careful here. Void hops on him. They could try to chase him down. Can't forget about that Orb of Venom, so that additional 12% slow makes it pretty easy for Void to uh, track people down if they're left by their lonesome. Yeah, it, it's a nice little value pickup here. Jakira's actually not even gone for any points in Ice Path. Two in Jewel Breath, and this is 
I think, a really bad decision. You're against the Void, the Sanking, you're against these heroes that you need the defensive disable. Like, having a slow isn't, doesn't really cut it here, and it's, it's really hard to use that defensively. Like, not having Ice Path, and you can see bottom lane, like, if you have an Ice Path here, this is so much so easier to protect your Tinker. Yeah. Usually the Dual Breath build comes out when Jakiro is the one getting farm priority. And as we see on the last hit charts, it is all about that Undying. He's actually the last hit leader right now, and it is a basically position 5, position 4 Jakiro. And I agree with you. I, I think that I, I would favor putting farm on the Jakiro over the Undying anyhow. And maybe if he had all, those, um, all, all that extra experience, the Dual Breath can really pay off. Uh, it scales Radiant's really well in terms of damage, but attack. as a support to move around and create space for your carries, it's not quite as useful. Usually it's just that one value point for the 30% yeah. slow that you see come out. It, it costs a lot of mana as well, like especially once you get it at higher levels. 170 mana compared to the 90 of Ice Path, so... Uh, it's... I, I guess... I mean, we'll, we'll see how it works out for him, but so far, Cleave just a couple of kills. Jakira not even involved in them, so... He needs to be protecting teammates. That's that's where Ice path, path is more useful, and against Chronosphere, it's great as well. But for now, um, Cleave, it's it's kind of tricky for them. Viper's not had the best time mid lane, even though he did get the one kill there. Rock it on. Uh, he he's not even really started working on the mech, so no mech really in sight for Cleave right now. Yeah, Ryze is doing pretty well. He did pick up a kill on the top lane with his first hook shot, and now he bumps right into the Jakiro. He does have boots. Arise with a uh, haste rune on. Three points in the battery assault. Will not pursue it as Tinker is inbound, but without a Tinker there, that is a free kill on the Jakiro. We see he did a nice bit of damage just with a, a couple of ticks from that battery assault. Now, Undying with all this farm priority, we'll just go for Arcane Boots first. But what do you think about... Hakan getting all this farm in the offlane, is this is this going to be put to good use? What does an Undying go for in terms of item build? Well, normally you see like the, the mech pipe, which I guess it's whether Viper or the Undying gets the mech, and that may come down to who's getting the better farm, and right now it is the, uh, the Undying who's a, maybe a little bit closer to the mech, so... The other option is one goes mech, one goes pipe. Uh, your Viper goes mech, your Undying goes for the pipe. With flare. Pipe against this team, pretty useful against the Sanking, and even the Scarif made single target damage can be yeah. uh, negated largely with a pipe. And Clockwork does a lot of magic damage. Darkseer as well with the Ion Shell and the Vacuum. There's a fair yeah. bit of magic damage that a pipe would mitigate, so eh, I think that could be a good option. Viper is actually farming a, a decent bit ahead of the, uh, of the Undying, mostly just because of the kill that he was involved in. But um, finding some decent space in the mid lane, neither of them committing to the mech quite yet. We see in the jungle, a rise, invisibility rune on. MYM have gotten every single rune this game, I think. And he'll find <laughs> he the Jakiro here. And he's thinking about it, but a rise, he knows better. He's right under the tower and will back out. Oh, they know he's there. The courier reveals it. The courier delivers an item and they're pinging exactly where Clockwork is. And they know it's Clockwork. Clockwork's the one missing off the map and he's the one that's almost definitely going to be ganking, so... Word goes out, mid be careful, bottom probably needs to be careful as well. Bottom are under their tower, but Clockwork could go for this dive regardless. Yeah. He's got an iron, with iron chill on him, he does so much damage. Yeah, it's it's pretty disgusting, and you can't get away from it either. You've got five seconds of power cog time where Ion Shell is just laying India. Now it just needs to line up the hook shot. And good positioning from Roger and Weck. They are playing this defensively, knowing that the Clockwork could be yeah. inbound. And they won't he could get a kill, but he would, he would die for it. And he doesn't want to trade his life for a kill. Uh, but definitely not on the Ventral Spirit. And even on the Tinker, it's not really... It, it's kind of like a 50-50 trade. He'd rather find an opening to try to get a kill and get out alive. Yeah. Yeah, certainly right about that. Now, Midas will come out onto the Dark Seer. We see this fairly frequently. Sort of a, a Bone 7-esque kind of a build, where Dark Seer can really accelerate his farm. And a hero that really benefits from experience. All of his abilities are worth leveling, so finding that big experience boost from the Midas will certainly help him out and let him move towards probably a Blink Dagger, maybe an Ag Scepter, though. Not really a great Ag's game, but um, maybe he'll just be the mech carrier here for MYM. I guess he is the most yeah. natural of the bunch. Yeah, I think he definitely wants to go for for the mech for the team. Maybe even a pipe as well to follow. Um, here we go, hookshot mid. Oh, yeah, right onto the Viper, and he'll be stuck inside of the cogs. Down comes the Mystic Flare, Burrow Strike to follow it up, and an easy kill on the Viper. Arise will walk away with 200 hit points to spare, and even has a regeneration rune in the bottle. So he'll be not so much worse for wear. Jakiro TP's in, but again with those two points in dual breath, unable to really you, do anything too scary. If you Ice Path the Clockwork, he's, un he's taking Radiant's tower damage. The Sanking also is stunning. You get a 2 hero Ice Path on them underneath the tower. 
you you maybe get at least one counter kill. Like this this build from Jakiro is a very very bad call coming out from from the Jakiro player. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, we've seen a few pretty obvious situations where Ice Path, even a single value point, would have really come in handy. And I think there, Clockwork could have dropped Tower Aggro, perhaps, but he was pretty damn low, down to about 170 hit points. So even just an Ice Path and then um, a Liquid Fire on top of that uh, probably would have been enough to bring him down. Middle tower uh, bottom lane, attack. we see some pings coming out as Ace is still just farming away. Roger on this Tinker has really had a rough time. This is one of the most yeah. uh, frustrating parts of the, for this Cleave draft right now is... 800 gold on brown boots with a soul ring bottle at 11 minutes, not where you want to be. This is, um, Tinker usually wants to have his BOTs by 10 minutes or even earlier. You know, you even see like seven, eight minute BOTs. The Tinker's really got a lot of momentum. No ancient stacks for him to rely on, and it's just slow going for him, and he really needs those BOTs up ASAP. And, uh, we'll lane. see more aggression mid lane. Yeah, yeah this time nice. they get a rise back. Yeah, nice swap from the Vengeful Spear, and they'll make it a one for one. The Viper for the Clockwork. So at least it's something for Cleave. But down bottom, we'll see a Chrono Sphere come out from Quicks, catches Roger, Ace is inbound, and just kiting around the Jakiro for now. Courier flies through and won't get picked off. They find the kill on Tinker, and I think they will dive this Jakiro. Ace will be able to make it back, and Quicks with plenty of hit points left has an Ion Shell on for extra damage. Two for nil in the bottom lane. Now mid, Rise takes a Magic Missile, gets punched down by the Zombie Undying, and a huge exchange of deaths around the map, but it is MYM that ultimately trade a two for three. Radiance bottom yeah. tower is under <laughs> the attack. The Daxi pick really works well with so many of these heroes. You put on a Clockwork, you put on a Void. These these heroes should get into melee range and just get in your face and have great initiations. Get so much extra damage as a result of the Iron Shell. So uh, the Daxi pick definitely fits very well with this MYM draft. Mm -hmm. And now Faceless Void will indeed go back for the Hand of Midas. He sort of half took heed to your advice and half to mine. He went for the Power Treads first and then decided to go back for a Midas. So slightly delayed that timing, but gave himself a little more fighting utility. And now he just wants to accelerate that farm. Of course, he yeah. knows he's having a great game, number one on net worth. And uh, taking a page out of the Cloud9 book, when you're ahead, just get further ahead. We will see a Blink Dagger also up on the Sand King. Great timing for him, especially given that he's been so active around the map 1-1-4. One, one, and four. A Blink Dagger at 13 minutes is absolutely fabulous. Arises on a little bit of a roam through the enemy jungle here, but Observer Lord has spotted him, so he's going to be careful. This is a hook, and this is probably maybe time to back off. Oh, not time to back off. It's time to dive tower. <laughs> yeah, they put the ward down. They force out two TPs, and even if they just back out here, vacuum on the Jakiro takes another bit of damage from the Cogs. Cheeky play right there as he gets vacuumed in. Oh, boy. Now Viper comes in with a Viper Strike onto Ace. Undying is there for follow-up damage. And Vengeful Spirit hits him with a wave. Now Blonde pressing forward, showing off that Blink Dagger with an Epicenter. The Khan will get silenced. He's on the run. And now Sand King in big trouble. Another Toxin from Viper really adding up. He'll fall here. Now Arise with the Blade Mail on. Trying to make it out, but we'll take Rockets. We'll take the Scream from Venge. And unfortunately, Tinker is just too damn slow on those brown boots, and he won't be able to pursue. Now in the bottom lane, Stress as well as Akan caught inside of the Chronosphere. Quicks will finish off the Undying, now goes straight for the Viper, taking a lot of damage here as Viper has already finished off the Skywrath. Those points in Dual Breath finally helping out, and it will be a favorable exchange for Cleave as more chaos breaks out on their side of the map. Yeah, and Dual Breath helped kill the Void, but Ice Path would have helped save the Undying as well as potentially kill the Void, so... We'll see Cleave turn this into a T1 tower bottom, maybe, though. They've uh, got the Liquid Fire out, uh, up to... Uh, it's already maxed out. Level 7 Jakiro now, thanks to uh, a good team fight. And Cleave will get their first tower of the game, unless MWM can actually come in here to defend in time. Hook shot from Arise, Blade Mail on, back you right into Wall on top of the Cogs. Huge synergy from the Dire side, the tower still falls. But they get quite a few kills to boot. Now Roger off to the side, takes a Silence and a Mystic Flare. He'll try to TP home, but it won't happen. They will end up losing their Clockwork as Weck comes around the side. Now he's stuck in a 1v3. He pulls a swap, trying to use that fancy footwork, but not enough to survive. Or is it? In comes Undying. They'll be able to turn it around onto the Skywrath. And now Blonde and Ace very low. They will scoot away as the Flesh Golem tries to chase him down. One last decay for good measure, and this little zombie will chase down Ace, but the tower will be there to keep him alive. So even more chaos will ensue, and that still wasn't too bad of a trade for Cleave. They did get the tower. Jakiro was credited with the last hit, and a couple of cleanup kills. Yeah, it's, it's not the not the end of the world for them. They're still uh, keeping things close here. The gold graph shows that things are pretty even. Uh, after the recent few clashes, Dax is going to go blink, says screw mech, I'm all about the flashy plays, the big initiations, and 
if he can quickly follow up the clockwork, we saw there you cogs and then vacuum multiple heroes into the cogs. They get trapped on top of that wall and so much damage gets output. That's where MYM can really just make their draft look absolutely magnificent. And well, we'll see Ace look do more of that with the Splink Dagger. Yeah. And NYM sort of caught in this odd scenario where they invested a lot of gold in Hands of Midas and Blink Daggers, and then they decided to take a lot of team fights. And that just doesn't really mesh. If they wanted to team fight and skirmish as they have been, then going for an earlier mech probably would have been a better choice. And even just some drums and some of those uh, earlier fighting items instead of the long term Double investment damage. items. Uh, they still will have plenty of time to recover, though. Compliments of the Midas. Radiance so it's, it's not all bad, but attack. I think they will try to slow down the pace of this game a little bit. And uh, commence the farming. Dyer's top yep. tower is under attack. Um, for Radiant's for MYM, I think they want, really attack. want this bottom. They, they've got this observer bottom lane. They've really, they're positioned behind the tier one tower to try and force the issue. So, looks like they do want to try and get the tier one. But TP's coming in. Yep, up top, Quits will burn a solo chrono through the double damage rune on makes for an easy kill on the Jakiro. Now the Khan TP's in, connects with a decay and. They see all the other heroes inbound, and that will be enough to try and sound the alarm to make the retreat. Night Clockwork jets. will get left behind, and Undying secures that one with yet another decay to the face. Viper does deny fallen. the bottom tier one, but while all that's going on, Rise and Quicks up top, they grab a tier one tower of their own, and it is Void that gets the last hit. Yeah, and uh, Void is still top of the... Oh, actually behind the Darkseer, but Radiant's the top two top farmers, Void and Darkseer, things are still looking... I'd say pretty good for MYM, just because there's no good anti-void heroes there's no doom for the the blink doom initiation they haven't really got that good let's jump the void before he jumps us kind of hero uh they can swap him in but it's like you'd swap him in and then where's the disable a magic missile doesn't come in time he can get a chronosphere off before you do that and quick just keeps getting kills with ease, uh, as as we just see at the top lane with the jakira yeah now rise and weck will kind of go blow for blow here and weck it or pardon me rise is the one on the back foot as he is short on cooldowns but connects with the silence and We'll hightail it out of there. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, we'll miss a kill on Undying as Stress dives the tower, looking for more damage. Might be able to grab a kill onto a rise. A lot of zombies coming out, but he will utilize the cogs as he makes it to the high ground. Zombies won't give two shits about the mana burn as they don't have any. And he will just have to turn and try and take him down. Quicks comes in to try and take some of the aggro rise with 13 hit points. He will live. <laughs> zombies versus the world. That was... Apparently, oh, that, apparently Rice just kept getting chased as well by the Venge, so... <laughs> apparently it was a crazy chase, I don't know, I guess maybe that's what we should have been looking at instead we'll of the uh, word for it. army of Look, zombies I, there. I enjoyed the five zombies versus void battle, that was, <laughs> that was quality. Especially with Walking Dead, taking a break before the next season, man, I've missed, I've missed my zombie action recently. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, mid lane, looks like another fight could break out as MYM. Dyer's Posture about uh, pushing the tower and instantly force out two TPs. Now Cleave have a five hero rotation and MYM go, well, we were kind of just moving in that direction, guys. We weren't really that serious about the tower Dyer's and tower they'll just spread out around attack. the map and find some farm. Quicks just moves right into the enemy jungle with eyes on all five. He feels pretty safe in this, uh, what would typically be considered an aggressive position. He'll time walk over the trees and just go right back to farming and lane. Now has his Mask of Madness up. Another 1,700 gold to boot, Dyer's and he is definitely is getting into attack. that fighting shape territory. Cleave pressuring the tier one mid. They will be able to bring it down, and it is the Undying Dyer's that gets the last hit. Has he has fallen. gone Vanguard and Hooded Defiance. Stands to reason that Pipe will be his next big pickup. Yeah, and with, with Mech and Pipe on the Cleave side, it's for MYM to take a team fight, they've got to like land this big wombo combo. They've got to get the vacuum wall. Uh, epicenter. Otherwise, they just don't have the the damage to win a team fight against against the pipe as well as mech. So. Darkseer does have his mech now, though, so that is at least uh, yes. something to counteract one of those attack. two tools on the side of Cleave. Yeah, no, that that definitely will help go quite a long way here. But you've got Undying to kind of boost up the damage that MYM are taking, both by stealing strength with decay as well as the flesh golem. So. Uh, for MYM, it's it's dealing with these tanky heroes, dealing with the, the spam as well. That's going to come out from a Tinker, but bottom lane, Tinker, not having much fun. Oh, well, Vengeful Spirit will be there with the swap, and that'll keep him alive. Quicks just makes the escape and uses that Mask of Madness to much avail. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Cleave will group up and take out that Tier 1 tower, and the rest of MYM will be mid uh, to make a Tier 1 for Tier 1 exchange. And here in a moment, it will be uh, the end of the Tier 1 towers in this match. They will all fall, and that will be the end of it. So... This Tinker, though, even though he lives right there, he's still in big trouble. His farm is pretty lackluster. It's getting better now that he found his BOTs, but 
Still very low net worth at this stage of the game compared to where Tinker wants to be. Down bottom, they'll find the Vengeful Spirit. They don't have enough damage to bring her down right away. And now MYM will be on a bit of a back foot. No Chronosphere for the Void. Hook shot, big vacuum into wall. And that's the combo that MYM were looking for. In comes the big Epicenter as well from Blonde. A lot of damage onto the Tinker as well as the Jakiro and Cleave. They are just getting cleaned up at this point. Hakan is still alive with the Flesh Golem, but his teammates uh, not quite so good. It is actually a two for two. They survive a lot better than I thought they would have. Viper was still able to live and get off the mech to top off his team. And like you talked about, all these big item pickups, Cleaver, just in a little bit better fighting shape. They're, they're just so tanky and durable. Like, even with the perfect, like that, that was almost perfect wombo combo there. Like you've got everything down, the vacuum, wall, the cogs, the epicenter, the burrow strike to follow. But the mech, the pipe negate just enough damage that you don't take too many casualties. And then once you live, you, you've got Undying to just so durable, dishing out so much damage. Tinker didn't even need to do anything. The Viper's the one with max corrosive that slows everyone. The slow from corrosive combined with the tombstone Dyer's zombies means MYM can't attack. really run once they, they take a fight they're kind of stuck there a bit and that's where void goes down as well as multiple or as well as the second hero and MYM have to be careful like even with these these big combos they're not guaranteed to win team fights oh rise he baits it out connects with the hook shot puts on the blade now Blonde comes in with a burrow strike the ion shell is there for some extra damage viper might mech up but it's not enough to stay alive and that will be a good kill for that's, MYM as they get much needed damage onto that Viper. Yeah, that's that's the hero you don't want to see dying as Dyer's well as your Cleave, because you want your Viper to really tank up and dish a lot of damage. When your Viper's when your Tinker's struggling like this, your Viper kinda has to take some of the heat, but not not in the form of dying. He needs to to make up for it by farming being being really farmed and doing a lot of damage and taking up taking up spells with team fights. Yeah. And 20 to 13, MYM still holding on to a decent lead, about three, four thousand gold or experience and a similar amount of gold in their favor with all the towers down. That is a, a pretty even trade and it seems like most of their advantage is really just coming from these hands of Midas. Neither team has a huge amount of pushing power, so given that it will be a slightly longer match, the hands of Midas have already paid for themselves and Void will move right into a Maelstrom. So his damage output moving on up and Dark Seer. 2,200 gold on him, so he'll be working towards probably a Shivers, I think, would be his next choice, but we'll see. Yeah, Shivers is definitely good. Uh, tower is under oh, I mean, you're against these, like, Viper and Dying type heroes, it's always, it's always tricky to know what to get. Veil maybe is a good idea. I don't know if he goes for it, but the Sanking, Sanking's maybe the more natural Veil purchaser, but uh, Veil's definitely a good item purchase this game. Something that often gets overlooked by a lot of teams, but you've got the big AoE Wombo combo. And you're struggling to kill people again because of the pipe mech. Veil will kind of negate a lot of that. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, Sand King will move into Dyer's a force staff coming up next. So if he wants the veil, it will be Radiance slightly delayed. And we'll actually just attack. now complete it uh, as we speak. So tier two in the mid lane, starting to get pressured by Cleave, and they can just slow siege this with four points in liquid fire. Very short cooldown, and Jakiro can just kind of lay into it and slowly bring it down. Clockwork looking for the hook shot off to the side. And the rest of MYM posturing behind the tower. Hookshot in right onto the Undying. They will secure the deny on the tower. In comes the wall. And down comes the Epicenter. That's enough to bring down the Undying and the Viper as the fight starts. He does get off the pipe before he goes down. But Void will throw the Chrono. Tinker is not caught inside. And the March of the Machine will do a lot of work on the outside. Clockwork will get picked off as they try to make the retreat. As will uh, the Skywrath Mage. Ace almost about to fall. And Liquid Fire. Is it enough to tick him down? It'll be a close call, and it looks like it will be enough. Shakira gets credit for the kill, and Cleave take a successful the tier team three. fight. Take yeah, a liquid fire. They're going to get this tier 3 tower down to maybe like half HP. This is a really big win. There's no Chronosphere. There's like, MYM, all their ultimates are actually on cooldown right now, so they can like defend with like Blink Barrow Strike, but Sanking, oh, we actually Sandstorm's nothing there. I don't know, but maybe just going to dodge a missile or something, but Dyer's tier 3 actually goes tower. down, not just half damage. They get the full thing? Yeah, that is attack. a pretty big swing of momentum. And looking at the graph, it's pretty obviously shown for us. Uh, the, gold gra the gold lead is now quelled by some. And I'm still holding on to a decent experience edge, but Cleave just showing us the power of the tank. Uh, the, the pipe yeah. from Undying making a big difference there as he was able to get it off before he went down. And they had to dump a lot of damage to take down the Viper and the Undying, the two tanky heroes, before the fight. And also a beautiful positioning from Roger. If he hadn't been outside of the Chrono yes. to spam all those spells, that would have been a different story. 
Yeah, because with the way M M team fought that, it was almost perfect. They got two heroes in the the dark the dark sea sanking combo with the clockwork, and then Void Chronosphere another two heroes. So four heroes were completely locked down. Two the two that were caught in the epicenter instantly died. The two in the Chronosphere though didn't take any damage because Tinker was the one outside had marched the machines down, almost killed the Void in his own Chronosphere because of the marks and machines with the Mask of Manners. So. Uh, the Tinker not getting caught out was huge, and he, he kind of pushed the Void back and turned the fight around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And following that fight, Tinker got a lot of much-needed momentum. He's now number three on net worth, closing the gap, the leading farmer on Cleave with a Blink Dagon to go with his BOTs and Soul Ring. So he has all those core items that Tinker needs to have a high impact. Still not as high level as he'd like to be, only 13 compared to the 16 on Void and Darkseer, but... Baby steps here, gods, and he's well on his way. Yeah. Hey, you win another fight like that, you get, or you get these. Even if you just trade evenly in a fight like that, and you put these big ultimates on cooldown, you you push high ground all of a sudden. So uh, for MYM, they have to be very careful. Uh, open racks is in the mid lane, and quicks is all oh, that. Wow, that was that really was close. Immortality, incredibly close. Roshan was like mid swing to get the killing blow on Void. <laughs> And then, like, the Void's teammates killed off Roshan. The, oh that my gosh. Was... I, I, I can't even articulate how close that was. That's like another half second, and Void would have died there. And my... Jig would have been up. And, oh boy. Yeah. Now Ice Path comes out. They'll connect onto Blonde, but he will be able to force staff himself to safety. Just a level one Ice Path, so still doesn't really hurt all that much. But Chikiro has committed to this dual breath as it is now capped out, or capped out at level four. Cleaver grouped up though, and they're ready to take another team fight. They're feeling pretty confident yeah. after that last Screw skirmish. They're Screw hungry. H, as they say. Um, this is an interesting decision, but um, I, they've got they've got all these tanky heroes. Like we, they've already shown they can deal with it. Even like looking at the support ventual spirit, seventeen hundred HP on a support. Yeah, drum and ogre club with power treads. She is tanky as all get out. So MYM, uh, they actually have the Sand King smoked up and they're trying just to pull the attention of Cleave into two different spots, but they need to be careful here. Without the tier two tower or tier three tower standing, uh, Cleave have that option to move up to the high ground a little bit easier. And this awkward positioning for MYM could actually backfire. Clockwork ready to make the wrap around. Hook shot on the outside of the skirmish here. Will connect onto the Jakiro. Quicks comes in. Chronosphere only on the Vengeful Spirit, not the target that he wanted. And now Void will take some return damage here. Stress in the front lines will fall, as will the Jakiro to get things started. Roger trying to go hard on the Void. That bring him down. That, of course, is the Aegis. So it's a two for Aegis exchange. And maybe they'll be able to get the Void once more. Does have a time walk. Will make it to the high ground. And he will survive. So. MYM, they make a hold, but they use all of their big cooldowns for that. Yeah, that's always the worry. Like, if, I mean, if Cleave really want to go gutsy, they can just buy back and try force these Raxes, but they'll wait for the respawns. They'll push out top lane with the Tinker. It seems the Undying and then just all lurking around mid, which suggests they may just go for another push when those heroes respawn. Problem is, Chronosphere, level 3, has a very short cooldown, 80 seconds. So by the time they respawn and they regroup a mid lane, Chronosphere is already going to be back up for the next push. So. Uh, it's not really, it's not really going to be easy. There is a much longer cooldown on the wall as well as the epicenter, though. So maybe they can play around that. Yeah, and here we'll see Khan get caught in the jungle. Rise. We'll just turn on the battery assault, bring out the power cogs, and this should be a dead undying. Is now there's plenty of follow-up damage. Ace coming in with his uh, ion shell deployed, and yeah, nothing the undying can do about it. Meanwhile, whack off to the side. Gets picked off by the Skywrath Mage, and that's a big streak going the way of Rise. There, 700 gold going to him. Yeah, that were, those were two two silly kills that Cleave just gave up there. They were doing they were doing a few nice little plays here and there, and got the T3 Tower, winning some fights, and even that fight they lost just then, where they lost two front ages, was still like okay for them. But those two those, those two deaths were just so unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hanging around in the dire jungle, and I mean, they know MYM are still pretty strong, and they're they're easily soloable. So, <laughs> Wick saying, "Wait, wait for my item." He's almost got a PKB as a support bench. That's, that's wow. Pretty damn. That's that's just crazy. Uh, Thirty minutes in. Haste. I don't know where this Venge is getting all this farm. I guess he's five, two, and seven. He's had a, like a really good game as far as his score is concerned. Yeah, uh, the BKB. I guess it will help quite a bit. Most of his swaps have been to save people from the Chronosphere, and BKB won't save you from that, but it will keep him safe from 
Mystic Flare and all that other magic damage. So I guess still a, a very warranted pickup here. Ace with 2,700 gold. Still hasn't picked up much. We'll see a long range hookshot connect on Distress. And he is in some trouble. Pops his mech, takes the Ancient Seal, and will get swapped. He'll actually survive the onslaught. Now Weck presses forward. Stun comes out, and they won't pursue. They'll be happy just to waste the wall cooldown and uh, keep their Viper alive. Yeah, same. This, this Ven just coming up big. He's He's been my MVP so far. He's He saved the Tinker earlier from a Kronos Fit bottom lane. He's made some really nice swap saves and somehow got all this farm up as well. So all in all, very impressive Ventral Spirit play. Uh, the support this game has definitely been really solid from both teams. Uh, looking at the Sand King and his performance, he's had some really nice epicenters in these team fights and uh, helped keep MYM in this game as well. Yeah. Void has now upgraded his Maelstrom into a Mjolnir, so his damage output is definitely starting to wreck up. Looks like he'll be going BKB next with that Ogre Club already in tow. Cleave will group up once more and try Radiant their luck as they press forward. Tinker will TP to the top tier 2 to uh, repel the pushing Void. And the rest of Cleave will just group up in the mid lane, ready to take a fight. Sand King once again lurking around in these tricky positions to, to get off a nice epicenter. Yeah, hook shot in, goes right in onto Roger. There's the wall. Or pardon me, there's the vacuum, and right under the Mystic Flare, but it will mitigate it a little bit. In comes the epicenter. So much damage coming out on the Radiant side, and uh, Clockwork loses his life. And actually, so did the Dire. They have to burn a couple of buybacks here. Where did all the damage from Cleave come from? Oh my gosh. The Dying was not caught inside the Chronosphere, and then Jakira got off an incredible Macropire that just tore apart MYM. I'm surprised they're backing Radiant's off. There's no there's no ultimate. I've seen no Daxi Souls as well, but still. They decide to back off, maybe wait for their Tinker and Maybe they're just happy for four buybacks. They're like, alright guys, we forced four yeah. buybacks just for Tinker. Let's just let's just reset and do that again. This time they won't yeah. have buybacks. This carry Venge is now level 16 with BKB and 800 gold on top of that. Like, this Venge is actually going to be picking up proper carry items soon. Maybe it's just going to be something like an Aghanim Scepter, but even so, that's more stats, that's more HP. That's the big problem here for MYM. Like, these heroes are all just so goddamn tanky. You get a 3 4 hero chronos here, but you're not killing them because they just have too much raw HP. I, I'm still shocked at how that fight went. I looked at the initiation, and MYM had everything perfect. The Mystic Flare was split around a lot of heroes, but the Epicenter and everything else, and I saw all the dying health bars, I thought it was cleaved and realized, wait a tick, those are dire colors. Holy crap, the dire are buying back. Like, it just incredible damage output. Yeah. And it's only a level 2 macro pyre, but I guess if you're standing on it for full duration, uh, the damage really adds up. Well, it's... It's still looking okay. I mean, it's looking pretty good for Cleef, but MYM, they've still got Raxus, they've still got Radiance great team fight of really, really fun Void, really fun Doxius, so... They don't have Epicenter no... here, though, which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. It'll be coming it's up been... as they're pressing forward, so Sand King might still have it in the nick of time, but Cleef are ready to force the issue here, and this could be it for MYM. If they take another team fight like we just saw, that'll be... That's basically game. They have no buybacks. Radiant's top tower is under attack. All right. Well, well let's see. Range Rex is dead. Under attack. And they didn't oh. use the glyph last time, so that will buy their uh, range tracks a little bit of time as liquid fire comes flying through. Uh, up in the top here, Blonde is Dyer's off to the side. We'll get harassed by Hakan, and just trying to create some space. Radiant's top tower. Range racks have already fallen. Melee racks will start getting clicked upon, but Cleave being a little bit more passive than they need to be here. I feel like. Yeah, they're kind of slow sieging it to make it so MYM can't get a good engagement because that's where, I mean, even last fight it looked like MYM got a fantastic engagement. Getting like three, four hero vacuums into epicenters and chronospheres and stuff is great, but if they can slow siege the racks without giving any openings for those kind of in initiations, just have Viper and maybe Jakira walking out with liquid fire, so at most it's two heroes caught in the vacuum, it is a safe way to push, but it, like you say, it's a very cautious way of doing things in. They've shown they can win these these more head-on team fights. Viper strike onto Ace to get things started. They've got Viper in the front lines. They flare. won't be too upset if he's the one that gets initiated on, as he is one of the tankier of the bunch. And they've got the Venge in great position, even if they drop the Chrono on him. Sanky again is smoked there. up, looking for a flank. And Dying's trying to scout him out. He keeps walking upwards, like he knows what Sanky's up to, but he just can't quite find uh, his exact position. Korea may scout him out there. Yeah, now Halberg comes through. Courier comes very close to finding the Sand King. 
Ice Pass flies through during the base, and the Slow Siege will be successful. That's a mid lane of Rax gone without taking a team fight. MYM basically just watch it fall, and now Sand King might get converged on. No, the hook shot from around the backside. MYM will go for it. Vacuum into wall. Nicely done. Stress in the front lines. It's a little bit less coordinated this time around, but in comes Sand King with the level 3 epicenter. The pipe was already on, so the damage is pretty much mitigated. Ice comes in, will try to make it away, but it won't happen. He'll get stunned up. It's a one for one trade. Trink tinker for Dark Seer. But Cleave will be okay with it. They'll be able to heal back up and yeah. maybe even just rotate to one of these tier two towers. It's a tinker for Darkseer plus like three big ultimate cooldowns as well. So like when, when Cleave are getting these one for one trades, but Chronosphere, Epicenter as well as Wall is being used, it's it's a win for Cleave. Even though they lose the Tinker there. If Tinker is something like it, I guess you don't want to buy them. it's not like you can pressure another lane to rack because they're still gonna get these tier two towers. So yeah, for Cleave, they they're perfectly fine with that. Yeah, and now they'll just back out, be, like you said, happy with their spoils. And still the graph's looking a, a little goofy here. And Cleave finally take the gold lead. MYM holding on to a big experience edge again because of the hands of Midas. But they are just not in fighting shape right now. Cleave grouped up around the bottom. They might be able to catch an initiation if MYM aren't careful. Rides will scatter out with his illusions. Roche coming up very soon here as well. And maybe Cleave can, at the very least, contest it this time, if not take it for themselves. Necro book is now coming out for the Jakira. Ooh, in interesting item choice. I, I mean, I think they realize they're just going to theoretically be trying to just do what they did mid, which is kind of slow siege. And if MYM, it's it's much harder to initiate on a slow siege because you don't get those really nice four or five man vacuums and walls when it's just one or two heroes on the high ground. And that's where having Necro book it helps. It adds so much to the slow siege, and it, it, it's going to force MYM to take these bad initiations and. That's where MYM are just going to have to be throwing ultimates and only getting one kill, maybe trading one for one and just not getting enough out of their initiations. Dyer's bottom tower well, this should be an attack. easy tier 2 tower for Cleave. No glyph available and attack. MYM will not want to make a defense here except Ace comes charging forward. He does have Surge, so that'll limit the risk, but if they jumped Radiant on him there, it could have potentially Dyer's been the death of him. They will no get buybacks one. for MYM right now, apart from Skyra. But that's that's a scary thought for Radiance the MYM are, They, they want to commit to these tier 2 towers, but they need to get back to defend. They have their ultimates here, and Cleve will just move right into the high ground. Talked about they don't have a glyph available, they don't have buybacks, Radiance they are actually just coming attack. up. So this is a good time Radiance for MYM to fight, as buyback will be an option. Ace taking a lot of damage as Roger hops forward. Mystic oh. Flare is there. Tinker the first to fall. The tower still has taken a lot of damage, but a little bit of hyper-aggression from old Tinky yeah. Winky there. They they really wanted those T2 towers because that, that was their buyback money. That got Sanky. Boys and Darkseid and Sanky. Three heroes have buyback now. Bro Strike on three. Quicks comes in with a Chrono on three. He'll go for the Vengeful Spirit of all heroes, and that's not happening. Pipe Mech Pop, and now Cleave ready to fight. Epicenter comes flying through, doing a fair bit of damage, but they're just too freaking tanky. Radiant Side survives with plenty of hit points. They'll bring down the Void. Now Ace pops his Shivas, and he may well fall to the Poison as well. Void will buy back. Weck in the front lines, taking a lot of damage here. He might have a BKB, but it has expired. Gets forced stabbed to the high ground, and will still fall. Now MYM. Make that effective hold, and oh, they get another counter kill onto the Jakiro, as the buyback from Void does prove worth it. Yeah, MYM hold. That's a good team fight, all in all for MYM, but it's still a worry, like how much they have to use and how little they can get in return. This time they will get an actual objective off of it. They'll get a Roshan, but they're not really ever looking like they can push out their lanes very well. They're constantly on the defensive and having just only. Possible trades when you're this much on the defensive is not looking good for them. Yeah, certainly not. Void will solo Roshan though, and this is only second Rosh, so no cheese coming out quite yet, but he will be able to treat himself to an Aegis of the Immortal. Pretty easy for him to take down. And that will help out MYM quite a bit in the next skirmish, especially given that Void won't have a buyback for the next five minutes. So that kind of makes up for his mm -hmm. lack of buyback there. And still a pretty interesting game here even that just that exchange beforehand was one tier two taken out by cleave in exchange for two tier twos for mym so they still found a pretty decent trade there even though they had to put a lot into holding the high ground yeah they did take i mean looking at the the raw numbers it it, it favors mym but that that's a huge amount of damage dealt to the tier three tower at, at bottom lane and at this point it's it just gets cleave one bit closer to breaking another lane of raxes losing those tier twos for cleave they're not really MYM aren't really any closer to taking Raxes because that was just some kind of like split push 
that wasn't really threatening to take Rex's though. Yeah, up top Ace, trying to go hard onto Roger, but Weck is there the with the swap lane. and a Dagon will bring him down. Now in the bottom lane, we'll see another fight break out. Mystic Flare on Distress, the Khan caught inside of the Chronosphere, and they think they'll be able to grab this kill onto the Undying. Or will they? He's doing a lot of return damage here. If only he had a blade mail. This could be a slightly different story. But uh, he will take a tumble nonetheless. Tinker on his way in, looking for some cleanup kills. A lot of low health heroes are on the dire, but Roger, Roger, Roger. Biting off more than he can chew, and Quicks will just bring him down. Yeah, Roger's not been a very happy Tinker this game, and uh, he, he thought he could get some counter kills there, but he just didn't have the damage. Just the Dagon one, and nothing else to go with it, so it's. It's just it just wasn't enough there. Yeah. So that'll be a one for three across the map. Certainly not what Cleave were hoping for. I thought it would just end up being a free Dark Seer pick off, but um, yeah, bottom lane Cleave just in a bit too aggressive a position. Vengeful Spirit has now picked up a Yasha. So she is starting to move into more of a carry venge. Strange as that is, but she's hitting pretty hard, over two hundred a pop. And yeah, level nineteen. Oh, Cleave have four heroes all at like the the 13k net worth or 12 to 13k net worth now. It's it's something I've like never really seen. It's just four heroes with such even farm. Uh, yeah. The hero well behind, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool to see such such farm distribution. Yeah, something's got to give, and it is the Jakiro, I guess. So yeah. MYM. Still holding on for now. Looks like we'll be in store for a slightly longer game here, gods, as both teams will continue to farm up. Rise working towards a Bloodstone has a Soul Booster on the Skywrath Mage. Void picked up BKB, still hasn't used it. Holding on to that 10 second charge for now. You know, we talked about the Shivas on Ace, and he's already up to about 2,500 gold. Please so he'll be working towards his next item for too long. Looks like Clockwork is moving into a Force Staff, and oh, up top, Juan will use a solo epi onto Roger, almost enough to bring him down, and there you go. Sand King will give him the old claw, and Roger falls again. Yeah, Blunt, Blunt's been huge this game. Great epi centers in general. Uh, really, really big team fight impact, and the Veil of Discord now being has now been picked up. Kind of, kind of. I think they're having so many big team fights. The Veil earlier would be nice, but attack. it's never too late to get. Like it's still a really good item even this late into the game. Yeah. Now Tanker does have a buyback here. And he's going to try to hold it as long as he can. Top tier 3 takes a decent bit of damage, but MYM will ultimately just back out and not force the issue. Yeah. Blan has no epicenter, so he'll be the first TP back. And his teammates could try to find a pickoff still, uh, with Chronosphere especially, but no, Void's even. He's gone all the way back to his end jungle. Yeah. Yep, everyone will just go back to farming for now. How's Tinker's item progression? Ah, pretty lackluster. Still just level 1 Dagon, and he's picked up a Ghost Scepter. He still is just unable to find that item progression most Tinkers are hoping for. And I guess E-Blade will be his next item of choice, but... Attack. At this point, you'd really hope to have the E-Blade already and start leveling up that Dagon, because the level 1 Dagon is just... Well, it just is not, not so powerful compared to uh, some of its upgraded counterparts. Yeah, you you get more damage from like the level one E blade plus Dagon one than like the the Dagon five, so it's a slightly more cost effective way to do things. But for the last like ten minutes, he's really lacked damage. That's where like upgrading the Dagon gives you like it's more kind of more cost effective in the short term, but long term it's not not as good as got, is saving up for the E blade. So where he stands right now, this Tink is just not really doing anything. He's on the feed train, and hopefully this E blade can kind of turn that one around. Yeah, he's sitting 3, 10, and 10. Yeah, that is whew, most deaths in the game by a pretty decent margin there. Him and Jakiro, it's been a, been a rough life. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Yeah, it, it has. And, uh, well, I, as things drag late game, I, this game's still very close. Cleave have the Rack's advantage, but... I don't know if I favor anyone, Andrew. This, this game feels 50-50 to me. I don't know about you. Yeah, I feel kind of the same. It seems like it's really come down to execution more than more so than anything else. When MYM get that perfect wombo combo, it's pretty scary, but if they don't catch the Tinker and the Radiant's Chrono and they can uh, allow attack. Cleave to get off the pipe and the mech and everything else, that ends up being a pretty even trade. So we'll see. Hakan in the front lines will heal himself up with that uh, soul Dying's rip there, but Tier 3 tower goes down very quickly. Glyph is still standing, but this is another lane of exposed racks, and Cleave will just try to slow siege it, I think. Off to the side, yeah. Blonde gets pinged out. They know he's there. Or no, that was a that was a quick ping. Never mind. They're pinging out the 
undying now that color blindness again. Rax taking a lot of damage here though. As Void hops in, Chrono Spear on three. Blonde with a pretty whiffed epicenter. Oh the no, his blink dagger gets canceled. Oh no, Hero still falls. Stress in some trouble. They'll be able to get the kill on Clockwork. Roger comes in, finally finds his E-Blade, and that'll help it out quite a bit. Clockwork does uh, buy back, as it has been a two for two. Now a buyback onto the Dark Seer as well. They're looking for this kill onto the Sand King. He'll blink into the tree line, and it looks like Cleave will get repelled as uh, Tinker trying to BOT his way back in. They'll finish off the creep, and yeah, Cleave will get completely cleaned up. And once again, we'll see sort of the, the same pattern in this game where Cleave do a fair bit of damage. They win the initial team fight, then get cleaned up on the buybacks. But NYM still lost a ranged racks and a tier three tower in that skirmish. Yeah. And it was I mean, a these double buyback needed to do that. <laughs> It's like it's it, like you say the same formula. Mym kind of win the team fight, but lose lose the overall war. Like they're losing their base, they're using up buybacks, they're slowing down their item progression with the buybacks. Oh, while yeah. I mean, you're losing Raxus. That's that's bad news. Even in the mid lane, like there's there's creeps just still pushing in, pressuring these lanes, and Mym at some point have to go for Raxus themselves, Radiance and bottom tower. that's bottom something their lineup just isn't really built to do. Void's not really a great high ground damaging hero himself on his own and his team is all about the team type so their only real way of pushing high ground is by killing off multiple heroes which right now there are still two heroes dead yeah and there are absolutely no buybacks available so they have a 20 Radiance second window here uh, where they might be able to do some decent damage but mym they of course don't know that the buybacks are completely unavailable and they'll play this one a little more cautiously they will just back up and Cleave will keep their base standing once more. Yeah. Now Void makes an interesting item pickup here. He goes for the Monkey King bar as one of his later game Ooh. items, and not one you see on Void too often, mostly because uh, the Chronosphere gives you True Strike. So that's a big aspect yes. of the Monkey King bar that, um, you know, is kind of useless to some degree, but it does give you one hell of a lot of damage output, which is there's something to be said for that. Yeah, he, he wants to be able to fight better up when he doesn't have Chronosphere, or at least when the Chronosphere expires, and that's where uh, Laser is really annoying to, to verse with the Mischance, as well as even Undying having some evasion from the Heaven's Halberd, but... Um, Tinker finds I don't know. a solo kill that one, but ooh, now he'll get caught by Quicks. And he'll put that MKB to good use. Yeah, the E-Blade, but no chance. Yeah. Not even close. Rise in the mid now. He takes a Viper Strike. He will commit suicide, but still goes down nonetheless. And they know Darkseer has no buyback. 90 seconds in the grave, and Tinker will be stuck without his as well, but... Oh, there's zero buybacks right now for anyone. <laughs> Weck talking a little bit of smack there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess that's a fair point with the MKB. The laser has nothing to do with the Chronosphere. If you get lasered before Chrono, you uh, you still have that mischance inside the sphere. So there is something to be said I for that. I don't know how that mechanic. So you can you can miss inside Chronosphere if you're lasered. Yeah, it gives you. I believe it gives you true strike through evasion. But I think blind abilities like Drunken Haze. Gotcha. You it doesn't Chronosphere doesn't negate a debuff on you that gives you a mischance. Okay. Okay. But it cuts through evasion like you know Heaven Halberd and that kind of stuff. So it's yeah. like, I guess so, it's like yeah. a. True Strike maybe isn't the proper term for it. It's like a pseudo True Strike. <laughs> but up top, Stress will get caught inside of the Mystic Flare. Blonde's there with an epicenter right on top of old Jack Daniels sponsored Weck. And they will find the kill just on the Ventral Spirit. For now, Stress hanging around a bit too long. Will get picked off and now Cleave in a little bit more of a sticky situation. With these two heroes dead, they will not have a buyback on either. And MYM may try to get aggressive in this window of opportunity as they do have a Chronosphere available. Venge threw the swap trying to save the Viper, but Viper ends up dying anyways. And Venge without the BKB didn't have uh, didn't have any way of getting out after using the swap into the enemy high ground. So not not the best of plays from Cleave all in all, but it's not the end of the world. And we am going for Roshan instead of trying to push and take us to the Raxus here. I guess maybe assuming that Cleave had buyback, but not the case. And something Viper actually didn't go BKB. He picked up a, I, I saw him with an Ogre Club and just assumed he went BKB, but he picked up a Halberd. So there's another hero with evasion, but I feel like he really needs a BKB against this lineup. Like, sure, he does want to tank damage. Like, he, by not having a BKB, and when we're throwing more spells at him, and that's kind of partly his role, but he's dying in these fights, and that's not something you want to, you want to happen. That's where having the BKB against Sand King, Skyra, I mean, all these heroes, BKB is Roshan great against the Boy. Into the yeah, and I, I mean, BKB is really good, and I think the evasion from Viper is generally a good idea, but given that Void has already picked up the MKB, you're, you're just getting more value to that item that he's already invested in by getting more evasion out onto the field. So 
Uh, even a smarter pickup from Void than we had first anticipated. His third Roche goes down. Aegis for quicks. Uh, Cheese ends up in the inventory of... Who has it? Was it the Clockwork there? Yep. And um, things starting to look a little bit more grim for Klee as the Void picks yeah. up his BOT, so he's a little bit more mobile. And he's still hanging on to that BKB. He hasn't, he's hasn't. he been using it kind of seldom here and being very choosy about how to use those uh, high second charges, but still in pretty good shape on that front. There has been an interesting item pick up on the side of Cleave, which is the Aghanim Scepter on the Undying. Not an item you see too often, as usually he doesn't have enough farm to do it. And any thoughts about that Ag's upgrade? It's one of those upgrades that isn't, mm. like, ridiculously game-changing. It just okay. overall makes it a better ability. Yeah, it, it's percentage-based, so it's actually pretty good because of that. Yeah, we'll see this fight break out, though. Stress taking a lot of damage. Weck pops his BKB as he uh, hops into the chrono, but not looking good for Cleave here. Two have already fallen. MYM still with all of them alive. Now Roger taking a lot of damage. Jakiro tries to force staff to safety, but he'll fall. Undying in trouble now as well. It'll be a full five-man wipe in exchange for none. They even keep the Aegis standing on the void. And now it looks like we could be seeing the end of Cleave. They have a singleton buyback on Roger. But things looking very grim. Yeah, that was that was bloody good stuff from NYN. They they just they they making these team fights work, and that's that's what they really needed. I'm surprised they couldn't do that earlier. Get those big five man wipes when they had these big team fight ultimates, but they just didn't quite have the damage. But you get to this late game scenario, they had a veil onto their team, they had a hex on the sand king even, and just getting these really luxury items has just worked wonders. And oh, the buyback from the Tinker, you got hex. Oh, Fire strike, no. Roger may die. Oh no, he does pop his E-Blade, Quicks comes in, that'll proc the Aegis. They can finish off the Tinker though, this is basically game. There's the vacuum out of the well, it's a dieback for the oh, Tinker. Yeah. Quicks will come right back to life, they're sure there's a Radiant Glyph. Viper coming up in 8 seconds, but what's the Viper going to be able to do realistically here? That was the, uh, the, the fountain diving and strategic fountain diving. Like, you want to kill that Tinker in his own fountain there to... Secure yourself these Raxes here. They'll get top lane. They're going to swing void towards mid lane perhaps Radiant's as well, but not the strongest push in there. We'll be four heroes alive, so you're going to be a bit careful here without some of your ultimates. Although, actually, Epicenter is just about back up. Wall of Replicas up in 10 seconds. Doesn't have the mana for the wall, though, so it looks like they're going to be happy just with the top lane. Yeah, I thought that would be a little bit more of a game-ending push, especially with the Viper going down, but unfortunately, they lost their creeps, and backdoor protection ensued, which was actually pretty costly. Cleave getting a small stroke of luck there, but just the way that team fight went, I don't really see anything preventing MYM from doing that in the next 5v5 onslaught. Yeah. I, no, I, there's no obvious items which are going to change much for Cleave. The Agony Receptor, at this point, it's it's just more HP, and in general, it's it's not bad for, for Hakan, I feel, but it's not like a game-changing item, and there, there isn't really game-changing items at this point. Tinker, maybe with the, I mean, Tinker, this Tinker not having dig on five at this point. Like, he's still dig on one of all things. This is just so much missed damage because of it. Boy gets initiated upon here, but does pop his BKB as well as the Chronos here. Now the rest of the fight will break out. In comes the Sand King with the Epicenter, doing a fair bit of damage here, but per usual the pipe gets popped. And they'll be okay. Void loses his monster so kill streak as the Tinker comes in to finish him off. Arise takes a Viper Strike, but gets surged. Now swapped back. That'll be the end of the clockwork. And okay. a three for nil trade the other way. Hakan will fall. The wall of uh, replica actually doing a lot of work here. And there will be two buybacks on the dire side. Void as well as the Darkseer. So they want to clean this up. They'll try to bring down stress. They'll first get the Shakira. Yules out onto the Viper, sets up for a Mystic Flare. And now there's three dead on the side of Cleave, and Weck will probably fall in a matter of seconds here. He'll stand his ground, and it will be a futile effort as four of Cleave dead once more. No buybacks available at all for anyone in this game, and now <laughs> MYM will press forward. Yeah, that was actually a good fight for Cleave, but once again, it's the MYM buybacks, and... Uh... It's 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 real. M Y M are just holding their buybacks much more efficiently and just using them to much greater effect. And uh, it's it's really kept them in the game. The buyback you sent. Oh, Roger, 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 Roger. Oh boy. You know, this poor Tinker. He has just not had a good game. Radiance. At this point, he I just feel like he's so low impact. Seven and fourteen. That is so many more deaths than a Tinker should normally concede. 
Yeah, we we got up to the Dagon three, but this late in the game, there's there's no excuse not to have a Dagon five. Yeah, this late in the game, you want to have your Dagon five and be looking towards a, a site device, really. Radiance middle. I mean, Fifty five minutes in, that that's where Tinker is getting to that critical mass late game of perma hex and just Radiance complete control, and he's not even attack. close. Now we'll see another fight break out. Hakan as well as uh, Metpum caught inside of the Chrono. They'll bring down the Undying, even despite the Flesh Golem. And now Jakiro falls as well, just the Viper up. And I think we're pretty close to the GG time here, gods. One lane of Rax standing for Cleave, and looks like it won't be standing for long. Yeah, the MYM, they, they really got put under a lot of heat here by Cleave, though. Cleave, I, I feel, came close. They just, the decision making at a few points in this game, and a few unnecessary pickoffs. Like, they had these kind of trades where they ended up okay, but then they'd just go and give away a few kills. Like, I remember the Undying and the. Ventral Spirit just randomly dying in the enemy jungle after a big team fight, which was kind of 50 15. Just these few small plays just, and decisions from Cleave just not really working out for him. Yeah, we'll see one last little team fight here. And even if Cleave hold and somehow repel MYM, they've already been mega creeped and it's not looking like that'll happen anyway. Mr. Jack Daniels here will pop the BKB and be able to survive. But uh, that is that is all she wrote. Only, well, really one tier four tower still standing. This one pretty damn low. And there you go, GG from stress. So 56 minutes for our first Radiant game of the day. Not tower. too shabby it's here, falling. gods, but it Radiant will be MYM that come out victorious with a pretty Dyer dominant performance. It, it was good for MYM. Like they they showed they they can execute and. I mean, they showed some just great teamwork in general. Like, even when they, yeah. even when the tr the team fights were kind of going 50-50, like they were landing all their spells in s with great synergy, and just it looked it looked really nice and it looked well coordinated. Uh, just Cleave had this lineup which was kind of designed to counter it, but uh, come late game, M Y M, they had the stronger stronger team fight. Yep, absolutely. So. We'll have a very short break here, guys. That was a long one to get things started. Uh, coming up next will be Power Rangers versus Cleve. So Cleve will get to try their hand once more and redeem themselves. That match is scheduled to start in just about five minutes or so. I'm Zyori in the studio, joined remotely by BTS Gods. We'll be back after a short break.